Recently, I was invited to compete in the Polybridge Olympics. Myself and a few other Polybridge YouTubers have to go head-to-head -head in four Olympic-themed Polybridge challenges. This is not about just completing a challenge, but getting the highest score possible. Now it has been over half a year since I played this last, so let's see how I stack up against my competition. The first event is the shot put. You have 20 minutes to yeet a one polygram boulder as far as possible using any mechanism you choose. There are a couple stipulations, the first being that you are given a hydraulic. This is not meant to be used on the launching mechanism, it is merely meant to be used as a timer. On the boulder there is a joint, and you're supposed to attach to the joint. You don't have to attach to the joint, but you can. And then if you want to detach from the joint, you have to use the hydraulic to time when that happens. It's a weird quirk of the system, unimportant. Another rule is that if you use weight, Think of a seesaw. You put a lot of weight on one side so that the boulder gets yeeted the other way. You can only spend $12,500 on the weight if you're to do such a thing. And that's what I'm trying to do at first, a weight-based system, just to see how well that works. And finally, there is a maximum length that a polybridge custom level can be. If you are to eat your boulder farther than that, there is a wall at the edge of that. And then the score will be given based on how high you hit the wall. So as you can see, I'm working hard on a very simple seesaw mechanism, just adding a bunch of weight on the right side, $12,500 worth of roads to be specific, and not having very much weight on the left side, where the terrain object will be launched. Now this is a very quick acting mechanism because there is not much to this. I'm keeping it lightweight outside of, you know, the weight. And my problem is that it launches so quickly that the boulder doesn't detach in time, even if I choose the shortest possible time for the boulder to detach. So I decide to work around that by just having a road catch for the boulder instead of relying on this too slow split joint mechanism. And that seems to work out a little bit better. Now you might have noticed by, by now that unbreaking is on. For some reason they decide to give you unlimited budget and unbreaking. And you know what the best way is to exploit unbreaking? Springs. I realize that I don't need a weight to weigh down the right side of the seesaw when I could just have a bunch of springs on maximum stretch power and use that to pull down the right side instead. I mean, it's not gonna break, so I can put as much force on that as I want. And because I'm not doing a weight-based system anymore, this is definitely a different mechanism, being a spring mechanism, I can have whatever budget I want. And they've attached a lot of very convenient static joints near the bottom around the area that I would want to be pulling towards. So I just this, I'd start attaching as many springs to this as possible, stretch them all, and laugh at how stupid this is. The only problem I had was when the seesaw itself started to buckle, but that could be e easily fixed with just a couple steel pieces added. I made sure to make the seesaw as light as possible, that way I wouldn't need that many springs to counteract the weight of it, and just keep adding springs and this thing starts to become glorious. The next minor problem I ran into was that I actually had too many springs. You see, this game has a rule where at most you can attach 32 objects to a single joint and I'd actually broken that limit, but that was pretty easily fixable because all I needed to do was just attach another steel joint in a similar vicinity and then I suddenly had another 30 places to attach a spring to, so that was pretty easily fixed. But now that there's so many springs being added, you're starting to wonder, is there a problem here? And yes, there is a problem, but the problem mostly lies with the game and not my own sanity. Still, with that many springs, you have to wonder, what exactly is going on in that boy's head? The clock is running down to about a minute and a half, and I want to make sure I didn't accidentally create a black hole, so I think it's finally time, with all these springs added, to give it a test. I wind up, take a deep breath, and... It hit the ceiling. It was so powerful that it reached the highest possible point. The creators of the level allowed it to reach and it could have gone higher. This border is in place because anything outside of it is incalculable. 
as to how far the final distance would be. They made this, assuming nobody could make it past. And yet here we are, donking on the ceiling and crashing down to the vertical wall. Now, I saw this, uh, my first reaction was, holy shit. Second reaction was, what if they actually don't consider this? I feel that I have to try to get it as high as possible along this wall, as opposed to just saying, oh yeah, I hit the ceiling, it would have gone farther. So I do a little bit more tweaking. I remove some of the springs, so it's a little bit weaker, but also so it manages to sneak in the spot between the top of the wall and the world border. And this is the one I decided to submit. It's a good thing too, because I talked with the organizers afterwards, and they said between the two, this one would score the most points. So that's my shot put submission. I can't really put a number to it, but it's pretty darn big. Let's move on. Next event is the high jump. Here we have 10 minutes to have our little car jump and reach as many flags as possible. Now this level again is unlimited budget, but there is no one breaking, so you have to make sure you can create a ramp that doesn't fall apart and screw you over. The only rules are that you have to collect the flags from the bottom to the top, and you cannot build roads outside of this tiny little box that the buggy is in. So the roads can't go too high and they can't go too far to the right. So it's just about ramp efficiency, and this one's pretty simple. I just start by building a ramp with the catch of having the roads go all the way out to the car. That way the car can start on the ascent sooner than the static joints appear. And that's not too tricky, you just gotta lay them out along the terrain and support them on the terrain. And you have unlimited budget so you can do whatever steel you want. There is a little bit of critical technique you can apply to ramp building. The biggest thing is that the ramp has to be as smooth as possible. Usually that means placing more roads so the curve can be gentle and that the car's momentum is not interrupted by an abrupt change of angle. And I've made enough loops and fine curves to have this down decently. But again, it's been a while. I'm not gonna pretend like it's perfect. I'm sure I could do better, but you know, my curves seem pretty curvy is all. And that does pretty well. It gets this many flags. And then the one major improvement I make is noticing that the car has high horsepower. So I'll create a ramp at the start so the car can begin by going downhill, allowing it to build up more speed and then going into a higher jump. Its acceleration is also fast, but its, its acceleration doesn't let it reach its top speed. So I can get away with that. And all in all, this is my best jump. It's pretty good. No Fosbury flop, but I'll take what I can get. Next up is the weightlifting event. You have 20 minutes to build as strong of a bridge as possible using only wood. The way they actually measure that in this event is really interesting. So we have a limo with a flat top, and what happens is that it's going to drive back and forth across the bridge, and every time it makes it across, one of these weight things. I think it's five polygrams drops on top of the limo, balances there due to the way that they're shaped. They all kind of stack up nicely and then it makes it across the bridge again to test the additional weight, adds another weight, test the bridge again, and it's really creative. There's 10 weights in total which shows how much faith they have in us and they're all attached by just little wood and split joints and hydraulic controllers. Now the rules of the event say you're not allowed to mess with the weights whatsoever, which I'm sure to do. And they give you eight roads to make sure that the supports of the bridge are only made out of wood. This is about bridge efficiency. Now it's funny, I remember this game for its falling roads, its spring cannons, its dangling roads. As far as building a real bridge goes, I think I'm a little bit out of my depth. I think whenever I was tasked to build a real bridge in this game, my solution was muscle, add muscle, and you know what? That works out pretty well for this, or at least as well as I think it's gonna work out, so I get to adding muscles. I add muscles, and then I add more muscles. Muscles are strong, you're supposed to have muscles when weightlifting. This is themed. Anyone who doesn't include muscles should be disqualified. I also have this thing on top where I have a truss of wood, and then I trust the truss. And you would think that I could trust the truss the truss, but there's actually a budget on this bridge. 44,000? That ends up being a real problem for me eventually. And I, it makes sense that they have this budget, otherwise you could just simply keep adding muscles, because who wouldn't want to do such a thing? But all in all, this bridge is like a hodgepodge of a lot of the things I remember from this game. I think the main thing I forgot was tension design. Tension would have been interesting, I just didn't consider it because usually I do it with cable and steel, not wood. But it's doable. 
While this is certainly the best themed event as far as Polybridge is considered, it's probably the event where I have the most room to improve. This is probably the event I could have trained for if I really wanted to. Though it's funny, I think some of the other participants did do some training <laughs> to prep for this, which is what you do for the Olympics, you train. I decided not to. It may have helped to train a little bit, especially for this one. So my bridge doesn't really improve too much over the course of this. I end up getting six weights and having the bridge collapse on the seventh one. I make some minor adjustments near the end of it in hopes that I could squeak out a seventh one, or maybe that if the bridge is just barely strong enough, maybe it could squeak out a position in the case of a tiebreaker. Because it never does better than that, but I get at least to the point where the limo makes it to the middle of the bridge and collapses on the seventh weight. That's gotta count for something. Anyways, on to the next one. The final event is the 100 meter hurdles. This is a challenge of speed. How quickly can you get your buggy to the flag over these four hurdles of varying heights? Four roads have been set up very conveniently to go in sync with the checkpoints on top of them. Whenever the car hits the checkpoint, the split joints of the road directly below it detach, allowing for a spring cannon to launch it over the hurdle. We are tasked to build four efficient spring cannons and of course not knock over any of the hurdles. Knocking over the hurdle is a three second penalty. So being the spring cannon expert in all, I get to work, I make four Vs and find that they're decent. I tweak the compression on them just to make sure we have just the right amount of lift without lifting too much because the idea is I want it to hurdle directly over the hurdle with as little of a gap as possible between the wheels and the hurdle itself. That way it can get to the ground quicker and then build up speed more quickly. And also the shortest possible launch means less distance means you're gonna get it faster. So in addition to tweaking the strength of the springs, I also create some wall braces in these little holes in the ground, I suppose. That allows me to move about the bottom joint of the spring V, however I please. That way I can move it one direction or another, which could maybe result in some forward momentum. In addition, adding forward momentum, I found that slight tweaks in the springs could change the car's landing. If the car doesn't have a smooth landing, it's gonna go a bit slower. Like if it lands in a wheelie, it might keep going, but losing speed, I want it to land on all four wheels if possible. And for the most part, I do that. Some landings are crisper than others. And after a series of tests and tweaks and changes, I finally found my best run. It looks something like this. Now you notice that there's still nine minutes left on the clock. And that's because after this run, I tried to make a bunch of tweaks to the setup and found that they only made it worse. That being said, my timing method wasn't the most consistent. All I did was pull out my phone's stopwatch and press start at the same time that I started the level and then tried to time the stop with it hitting the flag, but it, it was a little inconsistent. So I hope this was my best run because that's what got submitted. Feels pretty good. All the jumps were clean, barely scraping over the hurdles, maintaining maximum speed. And that just about wraps it up for the Polybridge Olympics. If you want to see how I placed and the general standings, I would advise you guys to check out Real Civil Engineers video. It's coming up a day after mine, so some of you may have to wait, but the results will be soon. And I'm excited to see them just as much as you are. Thank you all for watching this Polybridge video. Maybe there'll be some more bridges in the future, maybe not. Have a wonderful day and peace.